Welcome back everyone, I'm still Sylvmont, or Alex, and a few weeks back we talked about the Age of Ancients in Dark Souls 1. The timeline of Dark Souls is an extremely hard thing to establish due to a lack of dates, but it's a fun thing to speculate about. I mean, just look at the Zelda fans, they spent years putting together timelines. But hey, we're not here to speak about Zelda. But on that note, Majora's Mask is my favourite. No, we're here to talk about Dark Souls. Having covered the Age of Ancients as best as I can, today we're going to speak about the Age of Fire, and the Age of Dark, and what these things could mean going into Dark Souls 2, the sequel. So let's not waste any time and get down to it. Let us assume, and remember, this is just my personal view on what could happen, by no means official or even strictly accurate, as I'm only human and I miss things. Anyway, let us assume that the Age of Fire began when Seath betrayed the dragons, and the majority of them were wiped out. If you know Star Wars, then think of it as Order 66. The Empire began when the Republic turned on the Jedi, but the Jedi weren't wiped out instantly. It was a slow process. And of course, you can make anything relate to Star Wars if you try hard enough. Anyway, so with Seath betraying the dragons, Gwyn and the other lords obtained the upper hand and became the dominant beings. Now, we have a few facts to consider here. The opening movie of Dark Souls presents the Lords as being mighty and destroying the dragons, whereas in-game, Goth presents a different tale, telling us how even the destruction of one dragon was a feat that required the sacrifice of dozens. And these weren't just peasants with spears, these were knights. Then again, Goth does then cripple a mighty dragon with one shot moments after saying that, so it appears that a powerful soul was needed to stand against the dragons. The Silver Knights alone were not enough, despite being already rather strong, as far as we can tell. But then, in the opening, it is implied that the Silver Knights can use the Sunlight Spear, which we never see happen in-game. Were those the Elite Knights only, who travelled with Gwyn to the Kiln and became the Black Knights? Or were they not those knights at all? Perhaps they were clerics? Clergymen led by Havel, perhaps? Either way, once the dragons were on the verge of extinction and dwindling in number, Gwyn made a gift of the archives to Seath and named him a duke. High honours indeed. That would make Seath one of the highest ranking beings in Lordran. We don't know too much about such things, however. We know that Havel was a bishop of the Way of White, and we know that Gwyn was the king. But what happened after Gwyn felt the flame dying and left to kindle it? Was his rule inherited, or did a parliament-style system come into effect? A regent who ruled in the king's absence, perhaps? We can assume that Gwyn's firstborn son, whomever it was, was stripped of his powers before Gwyn left to kindle the flame. But what if he had not been? Would he have become the Sunlight King in Gwyn's place? Well, whoever ruled Anorlondo, it eventually came into Gwyndolin's care. The frail child who was raised a girl, all too aware of his own appearance, and set up at the illusion of Guinevere, seemingly to rule as his proxy. So, with Gwyn gone, Anorlondo was left in the care of Gwyndolin. Guinevere too left at some point, leaving to some unknown place at some unknown time, also marrying a flame god known as Flan, whom we know absolutely nothing about. Seath, meanwhile, spiralled into insanity in his archives, researching... What, exactly? Immortality? I believe that was his cause, and perhaps what led to Guinevere's departure. Seath experimented on her maidens, and perhaps even the godmother herself, possibly creating Priscilla, but such a thing would certainly give cause for Guinevere to flee. And what about the other lords? Nito sank deep into the earth to slumber in the Tomb of the Giants, watching over the dead. The four kings of New Londo had each been given a fragment of Gwyn's soul, as had Seath, and we are told the kings were great leaders for a time, until the Abyss. Whether or not New Londo fell before or after Ulusil, we can't be sure, but we know that both cities were in close proximity to Anor Londo. Was Karth behind all this, trying to spread the Abyss into Anor Londo? The Witch of Isolith, meanwhile, might have well tried in her own way to prevent the failing of the flame by creating her own first flame. Alas, she failed and instead created the Chaos Flame, the bed of chaos which brought forth all demons into the world. And we can assume this is what lost Isolith. 
the city falling to the demons. There were either six daughters of Chaos and one brother, or seven daughters and the brother. Either way, Kailana and another sister seemingly escaped the touch of Chaos. Kailag and the Fair Lady, however, were struck and transformed into horrible creatures, and at least one other sister likely died. And the other sisters are largely unaccounted for. Did they too become crack spiders? Who can say? One thousand years passed since the Bed of Chaos was created, according to Kailana. During that time, Kailag and her sister settled in Blight Town, and the fair lady, full of empathy, took the Blight Pus from the inhabitants and into herself, becoming somewhat of a saviour to many in that wretched place, but growing extremely sick in the process. Kailag preyed on those who entered the lair, perhaps to protect her sister and feed her humanity, to ease her suffering. Oddly enough, humanity seems to have an opposite effect on Artorius, who is poisoned by it. Chaos and humanity have strong ties to each other. Indeed, humanity quite literally empowers chaos. Now, what do you suppose that means? New Londo was flooded meanwhile, and only one sealer remained behind, Ingward. Seath remained in his archives, performing all manner of experiments. Nito slept, and Orlando remained in twilight, whilst Lordran crumbled around it. And as the undead curse spread throughout the other lands, more and more undead came to this land seeking answers, glory, a cure. Well, many came. Solaire of Astora, Lautrec of Kareem, Laurentius of the Great Swamp, Big Cat Logan and his apprentice, Black Eye and Tarkus, Prince Rickard, and perhaps most vital of all, Oscar of Astora, and the Chosen Undead. You. We don't know why Oscar was at the Undead Asylum, but it's because of him that the Chosen Undead was freed and able to begin his fateful journey. What drove him or her to explore Lordran? Well, only you know the answer to that. Gripping their weapon and perhaps touching their pendant for good luck, the Chosen Undead set out. And from there they followed a path unique to you, until they finally reached the kiln of the first flame, and engaged the Lord of Sunlight, now Lord of Cinder, in one final duel. No words needed from either party. Then, when Gwyn was defeated and set to rest, the Chosen Undead had a choice. To kindle the flame, and extend the Age of Fire once again, as Frampt, Guinevere and Gwyndolin implored them to, or to walk away, to let the flame fade, and for the Age of Dark to begin, the Age of Man. If the Chosen Undead kindles the fire, the last we see of them is their form vanishing amongst the flames that burn through the soul that has been forged through countless battles. And if the Chosen Undead chooses to become the new Dark Lord, then we see instead a number of primordial serpents bowing to them, Karth and Frampt included, leaving us with a cliffhanger ending. And that is where Dark Souls 2 comes into play. We spoke a little about that last week in the Cursed trailer video, and I speculated months ago in the Dark Souls 2 lore teaser, what state are we finding the world in? But who knows? The game is a sequel to Dark Souls, but I doubt the story will be a very direct link to the first game, but you never know. Did those giants who crossed the sea include Guinevere? Was Drang Lake made as an imitation of Anor Londo? Is this the world after the flames finally subsided? Even if the Chosen Undead chose to link the flames, that was not a permanent solution. And perhaps the next to try failed, or chose to become the Dark Lord. There are many questions and possibilities. Stick around a few more weeks, and we'll find out just who King Vendrick is, and just what we're going to become the heirs to.